Well, you've done it and you've gone and brought yourself an electric car. Well done. But how on earth do I charge it at home? Stick around and we're going to go into what options are available for home charging. So before we get into it, I'm going to be focusing on options to charge at home if you've got access to off-street parking. Obviously, I appreciate there's a lot of people that still don't have uh, access to off-street parking. I'm going to cover that in a separate video. So this is the first of a series of videos around charging electric vehicles, this one being home charging, but I'm also going to cover public destination charging and public rapid charging as well. So if you haven't seen those videos, go and check them out uh, and if you find this useful, then please feel free to give us a like. So your first option for charging at home is one of these bad boys, which is a portable EV charger or affectionately known as a granny charger due to the speed that it charges at. So these plug into your standard 13 amp three pin socket at one end and your type two charger socket at the other end on your EV. So these portable chargers are really good. They've certainly got their uses. Um, obviously when you first get your EV, you, the, the one advantage of these, you can plug it straight in and, and charge it. However, these chargers can generate a lot of heat uh, for your electrical system, for the charge in your car, a massive battery for, for hours and hours and hours. So if you do have to charge uh, using a granny charger or portable charger, then I would certainly recommend getting your electrics checked out or having a dedicated socket installed on a dedicated supply. But yeah, certainly get it checked out by a qualified electrician. Some of the other disadvantages of using a granny charger or mobile charger is that they're really slow to charge your car. Um, and also you won't be able to use some of the intelligent uh, EV tariffs available on the market by using one of these portable chargers. So these portable chargers are great, they have their uses. Um, I wouldn't use one for charging my car daily, but they do fit snugly into your car. So if the portable charger isn't the most ideal option, what is then? So perhaps you need one of these, which is a dedicated EV wall charger. This particular model is a hypervolt free, but there's lots on the market. This will charge at seven kilowatts, which is nearly three times faster than your portable EV charger, which I showed you earlier. One of the other reasons I went for uh, the hypervolt was A, because I thought it looked aesthetically pleasing. You can change these covers. Uh, this one's obviously gray. You can change it to, I think there's white and black as well to max, uh, blend in with your house. The cable storage is nice and neat. Um, this has also got a lot of LED lights around, which give you a good indication of uh, its charging state, if there's any errors, uh, basically what state the, the, the EV charger's in. And also there are some settings in the app uh, around some funky lights, some sort of different sort of patterns that these lights will, will make just for a bit of fun. The other advantage of getting a dedicated wall charger is that a lot of them are compatible with the intelligent uh, EV tariffs. So you can take advantage of the cheap rates, a bit like Octopus Intelligent Go. Um, but also like this one, they will integrate with solar panels uh, and battery storage as well. So that's something to consider when you're choosing your own EV wall charger. So some of the other considerations uh, around choosing an EV charger, wall charger, is uh, whether you want a tethered or untethered charger. So this one I went for is a tethered one. And so what that means is that this cable is hardwired into the charger and I can wrap it around and leave it as is when I'm not using it, which I think looks nice and neat. Um, an untethered is you'd use the type two cable that is normally provided with your EV. Uh, and you'd have to obviously get it out of your EV, plug it into the charger at one end and plug it into your car as you would to charge it at the other end, which is a bit more of a faff, but there are other reasons for, for doing that. So if you had uh, two different types of EVs at home, so you had a Nissan Leaf, which has a Chadamo connection, and then most other EVs have a Type 2. If you had a tethered one with just a Type 2, so that means you wouldn't be able to charge your Nissan Leaf uh, with a tethered one which has obviously got a Type 2. So if you had two cars with two different types of sockets, then yeah, that's probably why you'd go for an untethered option. So another good reason for going for a dedicated EV wall charger is around safety. Obviously there's a lot of safety built into these. You've got a dedicated supply back to your consumer board. 
So yeah, I, I would certainly advocate going for a wall charger, a dedicated wall charger than using a portable charger. So once you've decided which type of EV charger you want, then you need to start thinking about where you're going to locate it on your house. And there's a few uh, factors to take into account. So that's one, where your car is going to be parked in relation to your EV charger. Uh, and two, obviously where your main consumer board is and how to get a supply to your uh, chosen location. So in my instance, my EV charger uh, was quite a nice simple install. The consumer unit is just literally the other side of this garage door. So the electricians, when they came to install this, they managed to drill a hole straight through the wall here uh, and they've cabled straight into the consumer unit. So it was a nice, short, easy run, less than probably a couple of meters. Um, but these are the things you need to start taking into account um, where you're sighting your EV charger. Um, the best thing to do is to take a view or, or look through the eyes of an electrician, basically work out how you'd get a cable from your main consumer board, which is obviously where all your uh, RCDs are, um, and how you'd get it to where you think you want your EV charger. Obviously, if it's a, a convoluted route, uh, then obviously potentially the install costs are going to go up or it might not even be possible. So yeah, have, have a good think about where you may want your EV charger. The other thing to take into consideration is the relationship between where your EV charger is or where it's going to be sighted to where your car's going to be on the drive or wherever you're going to be charging it. Um, so that will determine obviously how long you want your, if you're going for a tethered option, how long you're going to need your cable to reach the, the, the charge port on your EV. Um, obviously taken into account, different EVs have different locations of charge ports and you may not have the same EV today as you do in a few years time. So yeah, just, just you need to add a little bit of uh, wriggle room I think in terms of where you're going to site your EV charger uh, as well as the length of cable you need if you're going for a tethered option. So if you found this video useful, please feel free to give us a like. I'd also be interested to hear your comments on the pros and cons of using a portable charger uh, as opposed to a dedicated wall charger. What are your views about using portable chargers? As I said, mine are, I probably wouldn't use one as a daily charge, but only in emergencies. Anyway, as I said before, there's a series of these videos coming up around public charging in destination chargers and rapid chargers. So please feel free to subscribe if you want to be notified when I release the next videos. Uh, and until next time, catch you in the next one.